welcome to Cerebral Arcade. I'm Stacy, and we're going to be continuing today with Detroit Become Human. So a couple of things off the bat. Uh, I just did a Tough Mudder yesterday, my first one ever, um, and I'm really, really sore. So this might be kind of a short stream. I apologize for that. Uh, but yeah, I just really don't know if I can make it through the whole stream. Um, and so yeah, so let's go ahead and dive right in. Where we left off last time, uh, we were kind of still pretty early in the game, and uh, we've played basically as three different robots now, and uh, where we left off, I was actually just uh, super frustrated that we didn't get a choice about whether we were going to rat out our fellow android or not. So let's go ahead and uh, dive into the next scene. Let's see what we got. Welcome to chat, and uh, let me know if you can or can't hear me, okay? Todd. Oh. <laughs> Dinner is ready. Just about everything they can to make him really unlikable. Okay. High dev spaghetti. There wasn't much in the kitchen. I did what I could. where apparently nobody turns on lights for themselves. <laughs> Life's funny. I lost my job because of androids. This is actually kind of one of the first interesting decisions. Somebody needs to take care of this goddamn had. house. What do I do? Go out and hire a fucking android. Androids are so fucking wonderful. They never fail. They never stop moving around. For Christ's sake, you're making me nervous. What are you looking at? What's your fucking problem? Not the life you dreamed of, eh? Maybe you think this is easy. Maybe you think it's my fault we live in this fucking shithole. My fault your fucking mother took off. You should stop taking drugs, Todd. Sometimes you really scare me, Todd. Fucking bitch took off without a word. Fucking whore walked out on me for a fucking account. It's all your fault. Daddy, no. It's all your fucking fault. Here? Come back here right now! You stay there. Don't you dare fucking move, or I'll bust you worse than last time. And I kind of wonder why they couldn't have, for example, added that particular shot into uh, into the cutscene before to make it a little bit more interactive.
coming. He's gonna hurt me. Run! Get away, or he's gonna break you like last time. Alice! Alice! Daddy's coming! You need to be taught a lesson. What's interesting is that that decision didn't actually do the thing. It just kind of set an objective for me. I need to find something. Damn piece of plastic! You seem to have a problem. And I'm gonna fix it for good. <laughs> God, they're making me run, and I'm so bad at these controls. Obey me! You're mine. So this scene, in contrast to some of the other ones, um, actually really did feel like it had a lot of branches. And this is one of the first scenes where I actually felt like I was making a lot of choices as it went through. And we can actually see from the, from the pattern here that that looks to be the case. Um, so yeah, so some things to comment on there. Like In the last stream, I was talking about how some of the level design of the previous scenes that we've played, um, I felt like I was in kind of a design uncanny valley where it was kind of giving me uh setting up like i had choices but then taking them away from me at the last minute this one actually felt like i had fewer choices except for some pretty major branching points um but in a way that actually felt really good the interactive cutscene felt really nice actually um even though it was pretty simple in terms of like it was two buttons um and quick time events are are kind of harder to design than they seem like they would be. So um, yeah, I thought that one was actually really well designed and the UI was placed really well and was really clear and easily readable. So, all right, let's go. That 
That was by far the most boring party I've been to in the last 25 years. Every time I go to one of these, I ask myself, what the hell am I doing here? I hate cocktail parties and all the schmoozers that go there. Well, it's a chance for all those people who admire your work to meet you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one gives a damn about art. All they care about is how much money they're going to make out of it. Come on, let's have a drink for the excitement. This whole thing has made me thirsty. Yeah, I really do not remember the layout of this house, like, at all. Okay. But I'm glad Scott, the doors are open. Scott, you usual? Absolutely. Okay, but you know what your doctor would say. Yeah, well, he can kiss my ass. I'm old enough to choose my own medication. Oh my god, I hope I can leave him or something. I'm having a really hard time with controls again. Stop, go the other way. Yeah, I still feel like, honestly, my one of my biggest issues in this game is the control scheme. Like, I don't know how to stop pushing him. <laughs> Maybe I'm supposed to leave him somewhere. I'm really trying to serve that scotch. And now it's just awkward because I'm hitting this old man around the room. Right, we're gonna leave him over by the giraffe. All right, cool. So that's a like that's another moment there where I feel like the the design and objective directives were like not really clear enough there. Like it it doesn't feel like it should have been like a difficult thing to move him into the correct place in the room. Did you leave the light on in the studio? No, no, I'm sure I didn't. Call the police. This is Carl Manfred's android at 8941 Lafayette Avenue. We've just returned home and found the lights on. There may have been a break-in. A patrol car is on the way. Let's go check it out. Let's, like, Marcus, together. no, I'm gonna come with you. Okay, yes, apparently. So see, like, that's another moment where I'm like, oh, I'll go investigate this thing so that, you know, this person doesn't have to. Um, trying to kind of role play, you know, what this android who seems to have a good relationship with master would do. What are you doing? You refuse to help me, so I'm helping money. myself. It's crazy what some people pay for this shit. Don't touch them. Look, they're all gonna be mine sooner or later anyway. Just think of it as a down payment on my inheritance. Marcus, get him away from there. Get him out of here. Hmm. Yeah, what should we do? Uh, let's try to reason with him at first. Too reasonable. This isn't gonna get you anywhere. All you ever do is tell me to go away. What's wrong, Dad? Not good enough for you? Not perfect, like this fucking thing? That's enough! Get out! Right now! What makes it so special anyway, huh? What's it got that I don't- Leave him alone! Come on! Let's see what you got! Marcus, don't defend yourself, you hear me? Don't do anything. Go ahead, hit me. What you waiting for? Think you're a man? Act like one. Ugh, stop it! Doesn't matter too much this of a pussy. Stop it, Leo! Stop it! Just scared to fight back, you fucking bitch! Uh. Mm, okay. That seemed a little unnecessary. Thanks, Oh, interesting. That now we're starting to get deciding for ourselves. But what's funny is that I actually don't want to do this. Like, I actually would prefer to. To follow orders in this case, but the game is not necessarily giving me that as an option. Which, funny enough, in chat last time, people were saying that one of the reasons I wasn't getting, you know, options was because androids, you know, have to follow their programming. But this is actually kind of working in the other direction, where the game is forcing me to disobey my programming. Right, I forgot you're not a real person. You're just a fucking piece of plastic. No, Leo, leave him alone. No. I'm gonna destroy you. And it'll just be me and my dad. I'm gonna tear you apart, and nobody's gonna give a shit. Right, and now I have nothing. the option to decide. You hear me? But you're weird nothing. that I had to go through that whole breaking my programming. In the last case, like I wanted to break my programming. 
Please don't go. Don't leave. Remember, Marcus. Don't let anybody tell you who you are. No. No. Dad. No. Dad. Please. This is all your fault. This never would have happened if it weren't for you. The android. Who's the android? Really good use of controller rumble there. Okay, so yeah, so like... I don't know, looks like one kind of major branch point in this one. Um, yeah, happy with my decisions there. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Why'd you kill him? What happened before you took that knife? How long were you in the attic? Why didn't you even try to run away? Say something, goddammit! <laughs> Fuck it. I'm out of here. We're wasting our time interrogating the machine. We're getting nothing out of it. You always try roughing up a little. After all, it's not human. Androids don't feel pain. You would only damage it. And that wouldn't make it talk. Deviants also have a tendency to self-destruct when they're in stressful situations. Okay, smartass. What should we do then? I could try questioning it. <laughs> what do we have to lose? Go ahead. Suspect's all yours. Controls to be um, hilarious sometimes for the shots that it sets up. Okay, uh, so in adventure games, you always look before you interact, so let's analyze them first. Optimal stress for confession. Okay. It's always really weird to me when games kind of like really systematize, you know, these kind of emotions and things like that. It, you can get away with it a little bit more when we're talking about robots, but, uh, You're damaged. but yeah, it still feels a little weird. Did your owner do that? Did optimal he beat you? Stress. I detect an instability in your program. It can trigger an unpleasant feeling, like fear in humans. Mm. You're accused of murder. 
You know you're not allowed to endanger human life under any circumstances. Do you have anything to say in your defense? Okay, stress level is too low. All right, so let's- You don't seem to understand the situation. You killed a human. They'll tear you apart if you don't say something. If you won't talk, I'm going to have to probe your memory. No, 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 please don't do that. So an interesting note there was that I didn't even actually have the option to go too high. No. Let's, uh, let's see I if they just want to understand. They know your master of Yeah, it's going down. Okay. It wasn't your fault. Why did you tell him you found me? Why couldn't you just have left me there? They were going to find you anyway. See, and now this is another best. point where I'm having trouble with the choice text because I'm not they actually sure first. what kind of lie or truth I'm going to be telling, which makes it really hard for me to predict what it's going to do to his stress level, which is actually stepping on my agency quite a bit because I'm not able to strategize around the choice that I'm making, and I'm not really able to roleplay because the system is telling me not to do what my character would do, but to do what's best to achieve the goal. So it seemed like it was a little bit low on stress, so I guess we'll try a little bit. 28 stab wounds. You didn't want to leave him a chance, huh? Did you feel anger? Hate? And, and now, like, I don't know what give up means. Begging you for mercy. Does give but up mean stab. stop pressuring again him? Or and again does give up again. mean... Please. Please leave me alone. Sure. All right. All right. Everything is going to be okay. Like, I don't know what order means. You're a machine you were designed to obey, so obey! Oh, like, give it an order. Tell me what happened. I... Okay, then. Don't talk. What do I care after all? I mean, I'm not the one accused of murder, right? If you remain silent, there's nothing I can do to help you. They're gonna shut you down for good. You'll be dead. Do you hear me? Dead. So I'm not sure if going too high failed just now, or if, um, I'm not getting anywhere. if I was too high at the natural up. end point. But I don't want to give up. So, like, why is the game giving me a choice? Like, this is kind of an odd moment, like, what if I don't leave? What, what does it do? Okay. Chris, lock it up. Alright, let's go. Leave me alone! Don't touch me. What the fuck are you doing? Move it! You shouldn't touch it. It'll self-destruct if it feels threatened. Stay out of this, got it? The fucking Andrew's gonna tell me what to do. You don't understand. If it self-destructs, we won't get anything out of it. I told you to shut your fucking mouth. Chris, you gonna move this asshole or what? I'm trying. I can't let you do that. Leave it alone now. I warned you, motherfucker. That's enough. Mind your own business, Hank. I said that's enough. This time. Everything 
was all right. It's over now. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Please, don't touch it. Let it follow you out of the room, and it won't cause any trouble. supposed to mean. So yeah, so there were a lot of different things that could have happened there, but it was a little bit frustrating because like I really was not sure, like not even what the outcome of my choices would be, but what choice I was even choosing at a lot of these points. So, and this is the thing is that, like, I believe that it's okay to undermine your player's expectation of the thing they're about to choose. So, like, if I, you know, when I chose intervene and uh, my character intervened, but it had a negative impact when I meant for it to have a positive impact, like, that's okay. That's surprise. But if I select intervene and my character doesn't intervene or doesn't try to, um, which didn't happen in that scene, but it did feel like some of the choices earlier were sort of in that direction... Um, that just, it, it feels a little unclear. And that's kind of what I mean about like this game stepping on agency a lot, where it's like a lot of times based on the display text, I don't actually know what choice I'm making. And part of like setting up agency for a player is making sure that the player knows what they're doing and has some approximation of what the outcome of that choice is going to be, or what the impact of that choice will be. At least what the choice is that they're making. I do really enjoy a lot of the environments in this game. Um, I think some of the sort of environmental world building and environmental storytelling is really interesting. Thank you for using Detroit buses. <gasps> Alright. Is my sleeping? End the line. End of the line. Yeah, you're gonna have to leave. If I don't wake her up, will he intervene? Will he wake her up? Okay, I have to. Wake up. We have to go. And a lot of these choices, I'm not actually expecting like, the game to necessarily give me a different output. Like, I don't necessarily need a branch there for did I wake her up or not. There's just something about wanting to roleplay the character in a particular way, where, like, I don't want to be the one that wakes her up. And it feels like if I idle here long enough, you know, it would be nice if, for example, the, you know, the driver said, hey, you know, you have to get up and wakes up the girl instead of me having to do it, which is a small detail that I wouldn't expect the game to react to, but at least then I'm internally able to play the character in a way that I want to. Again, the the, uh, the acting is really good. It's actually really hard to get agents to kind of express that much emotion in their movement. Gotta hurry, hurry. So yeah, so that that choice about whether to stay here or, or go somewhere it feels like it would be a lot better um, coming after we get off the bus. But I do kind of understand that. What are these guys doing? We need a place to stay. Whoa, that was crazy. Do you know anywhere we can spend the night? <laughs> They did a really good job of making that feel really creepy and awkward. Um, which is really interesting from a character development perspective because it's basically setting up like that my character is different from these other androids, which of course because I've broken my programming is, is true. Um, okay. 
open 24 hours, but we can't stay at the laundromat. Um, yeah, so this kind of like solved the puzzle view. Um, we could ask for help at what looks like a drugstore. Okay. Um, but yeah, these these kind of views are um, increasingly popular in open world and particularly in uh, comfortable but safe and we could potentially get in. So uh, I think that's where we ultimately want to head, but I kind of want to check out some of these other places first, um, which in a game like this, it, funny enough, feels more risky than in a game like uh, Zelda, for example, where I feel like in a game like that, I'm able to explore something without necessarily feeling like I'm committing to making a choice there. Whereas in a game like this, because it's so narratively focused, um, it's warm in here. You'll and is so time. insistent on you know these cutscenes and it being kind of in this interactive movie fashion that it does feel like by coming in here I might be giving up the opportunity for uh, that other choice. Change of clothes. I was talking and totally missed that first part. I want to talk to this guy though. I don't have the option. Seems it was really interesting. Okay. So, like, yeah, this is sort of another moment where it doesn't feel like this puzzle should be that difficult. solutions aren't. And I guess the only thing we have in here is whether we want to steal the clothes or not. So let's not do that. Come on, let's go. Walk, we're doing it anyway. Breaking our programming. So, try to find a way to get in. Where's she gone? Hey, where are you off to? Yeah, that's reasonable. 
Um, yeah, it might have been nice to have like a voice line there to, for her to tell me what she was up to. comfort her. Alice, you're freezing cold. I'm okay. I'm not so cold. You look lost. We have nowhere to go. I know someone who can help you. Hold on, blanket thing is so creepy. But that's on the other side of town. We need a place for tonight. environment's really good here. Um, really nice lighting. And I like the AI that Alice kind of keeps seeking shelter on her own. Right, let's see the car. It looks it abandoned. Looks abandoned. Okay. I feel like there should be an easier way to do this. Stand, Stand back, back, Alice. Inside, and nobody will find us here. I don't want to sleep in there. Can't we find a better place? Hmm. All right, we're gonna keep okay, searching, okay. but the next one we find, we'll find some definitely sleep in there. just for one night and no one will look for us here. Alright. Back to our wire cutters that we found on the way in. Very well placed. Thank you level designers. Just wish she would just cut them. That I didn't have to act all this out. Particularly since I'm extremely bad at the lefts and the rights, but okay. are you alright? Yes, it's just a scratch. Be careful. Good use of the wrong huh? Don't worry, we're just having a look. I 
also would really like the camera to move a lot faster in this particular view. Okay. Interesting what the camera is doing here. Um, this is a game, as I was talking about on the last stream, that clearly has really particular ideas about how I should be viewing this game. There are a lot of times where the camera actually like actively fights you from certain views. There's a lot like old Resident Evil games in a lot of places. All right, we've got some ways in. So some boards. Let's try the front door before we probably inevitably break into these boards. Alice? Alice! Wait, what are you doing? Visitors. Ralph doesn't like visitors. They're nasty. They may hurt Ralph. Uh, I don't know what any of those mean. Look, I'm an invert too. We have nothing to be afraid of. All we want is a place to spend the night. Visitors are dangerous. Look. What they did to Ralph. Really good music. Uh sure. Let's sure. nothing to worry about. So yeah, and I'm not, not I'm not quite reading what the word. jibbling of certain options is supposed to mean, if that's just to add intensity to the scene or if that's just communicating Ralph. something. Ralph still finds it difficult to control himself. Sometimes his fear makes him do things he regrets. Ralph has seen some hard times. He's just so scared the humans will get him again. You can stay if you want. Ralph won't hurt you. Cars look pretty real. good. Come on, Alice. Oh, good. I was really afraid they were going to make me walk back across that yard. <laughs> like, walking is the hardest thing in this game. <laughs> yeah, let's go. We hang have out to the find car. somewhere, anywhere, just a place to spend the night. Yeah. Hang on, Alice. We'll find something. I promise. We're better off staying, Alice. The important thing is for us to be safe. So I was a little bit of a for thing where she wandered away and appeared next to me. What's funny is that in most games that wouldn't even have registered, but because this game insists on such cinematic camera angles, it, uh, like red really intently. Yeah. Why didn't he ever love me? Why was he always so upset with me? All I wanted was a life like other girls. Maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I wasn't good enough. That's why he was always so angry. This is actually one of the first times I just that wanted us to be a family. Showing a little bit of weakness. I just wanted him to love me. Why can't we just be happy? I don't know, Alice. You'll never leave me, right? Promise you'll never go. I promise. Yeah, that's a super classic we'll telltale move there. Forever. Make make the player promise something that later they're gonna test. Forever. And then the false choice there is a little uh, frustrating. It's cute too. Okay, so yeah, lots of paths here. Um, 
this was definitely one where uh, I definitely felt like we could have gone and explored some of those other options. Um, but again, I was kind of afraid to commit to what that was going to do. Um, I am actually liking some of the things it's calling out to me here, like the fact that I met Ralph. Um, but yeah, we, uh, we definitely did not see that play out. Interesting that me sleeping next to Alice was, uh, was a thing there. Oh, only in as much as everything leads back to it. Interesting. Okay, let's keep going. Wow, that water is really, really nice. The light reflecting, just everything about this is like, wow. Okay, yeah, that's what we're doing. I'll stop gushing about the graphics. Wow, this has a Terminator vibe. Like, wow. Um, and really interesting having like all of the body parts and it feeling kind of a bit grotesque, like literally so. Um, is usually used in, in movies about androids to draw attention to the fact that they're not human, to kind of point out their otherness. kind of like forcing me to roll over the whole body here to look for stuff. If we weren't in the um, easier mode, those lines wouldn't even be there, so we as the player would have to be kind of going through this even more. Which is interesting that they chose to distort the uh, vision there to make it probably a little less uh, kind of gross. my legs. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yes, this feels really opposite of what I want to be doing. Like technically, yes, this is my left, this is my right, and they're making it more difficult as I go. Um, but because of the way the shot was reversed, it actually felt really awkward to be going backwards there. Okay. Um, that actually feels like a moment though that probably had a huge design meaning behind it or something. exactly like this to kind of point out the places where he's not human and it's it's supposed to have that moment of like you know distancing from that character or pointing out the fact that this is not human and this is a really long scene to do that kind of making the player act out these things really really highlighting It's, it's kind of having both effects too, right? Because as I'm pushing these other body parts away and, you know, like, like pushing away another body, um, it feels kind of gross while at the same time pointing out that these aren't people. Yeah, doing a lot of kind of gross. 
grotesque body or stuff. As the person who wants to roleplay, like I kind of wish that they would give me uh that they would give me a character that I could feel okay about. Yeah, I like this one. Interesting that try climbing is a thing.
it is kind of funny that um, Solve the Puzzles for you seems to be the easiest way to control the camera in this game. <laughs> Scenes like this, where um, you know they were kind of interactive quick time events, that uh, that ended up kind of teaching you the skills of the interactive cutscene, so that later in the game they actually didn't provide which buttons to hit, but because by you know later in the game you performed enough of them, um, you sort of knew what to do about that. And I think that in a lot of ways that paved the way for um, some of the more advanced uh, interactive cutscenes. But yeah, I mean, in early games, they did have a very, like, press X to not die feel to it, which, you know, again, I guess just, it's not very good in terms of agency, and I think they weren't blended into gameplay very well, either, in, in some of the earlier games to do them. But they've come a long way, and I feel like they still have a little bit of a, a bad rep, but... So the interesting thing is that I wasn't entirely sure what I was ripping off the first time there. <laughs> Um, but interesting that they make me kind of do it multiple times there. Uh, Marcus came back from the dead. Interestingly, that seems to be the only exit from that level. Cool. Wow, this is pretty. I'm not sure if we know who Amanda is. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to. That looks like a person. Okay. Uh, I kind of just want to see if I can go off this. Just to see if I can. No, I can't. Alright. Fair enough, game designers. Very pretty. Hello, Amanda. So the little design in this area is actually Hi. what I've wanted it's from a lot of previous you. areas, where it uh, kind of only Finding let me go to like one central place. Easy. You showed great skill in your investigation, but you knew deviants could be unstable. You should have been more cautious. I thought I could I make it talk. It was a judgment error. Never mind. I'm sure you'll be more careful in the future. The interrogation wow, seemed challenging. What did you think of the deviant? Uh, again, I'm not really sure what a lot of these choices are going to say. Deviancy. Cognitive instability, unpredictable behavior, and the emulation of human emotions. He was even afraid to die. 
The model was clearly defective. This Lieutenant Anderson has been officially assigned to the deviancy case. What do you make of him? Um, He's obviously not what I was expecting. But I don't have enough information yet to form a definitive opinion. Unfortunately, we have no choice but to work with him. What do you think is the best approach? I will try to establish a friendly relationship. If I can get him to trust me, it will be helpful for the investigation. More and more androids show signs of deviancy. There are millions in circulation. If they become unstable, the consequences will be disastrous. You're the most advanced prototype Cyberlife has ever created. If anyone can figure out what's true? happening, it's you. You can count on me, Amanda. I don't know, it kind of seems like Marcus is a little more advanced. Hurry, Connor. There's little time. Don't cross the line. Is this where I have to break my program? No. Okay. Can I help you? I was like, wow, that would I'm be here really to see true. Do you have authorization? Yes. Lieutenant Anderson hasn't arrived yet, but you can wait at his desk. Samples yet? Lab report says they cut it with something. I mean, this seems like a maybe they're trying out a new form thing. I might know. Probably not that one. We need the forensics. Interesting, like I feel like um uh yeah, like exploring areas, which for me is a thing I really enjoy doing in a lot of games, but these donuts are so beautifully rendered. Um like I, I really enjoy in a lot of games exploring. There we go. And this game makes it really frustrating to do that. Um, just largely it's it's controls. Okay, so here's his desk. Excuse me. Do you know what time Lieutenant Anderson usually arrives? Depends on where he was the night before. If we're lucky, we'll see him before noon. Thanks. So, yeah, this is another moment where it's a little unclear, like the game's like, sit up, explore, do different things. Um, and not really in a way that felt like a choice, but more in a, do this, no, do that. And interesting that I now have a directive to learn more about him. Which seems like a thing I might have wanted to do. Call Hank Anderson. Hi, this is Hank. Not here at the moment. You can leave a message if that's what turns you on, but don't expect me to call back. Beep. Whatever. Um, sure. Lieutenant Anderson, this is Connor. I'm the android sent by Cyberlife. It's almost noon, and I'm waiting for you at the office.
<laughs> Playing the investigation game on his desk. Donuts. Complete with nutrition packs. So, funny enough, I think this is a moment that, um... Anti-Android slogans... That, uh... If I wanted to be ignored, I'd talk to my ex-wife. Wow, that's kind of brutal. Um... Yeah, like, this was, like, a moment, a moment that could actually introduce, uh, some humor and, like, a little bit of levity. But, I don't know, I guess if the intention is to, um make him unlikable, which the anti-android slogans seem like they're doing, um, and maybe human humor with humans a little too much. Okay, we analyzed the crap out of his desk. It's good to see you again, Lieutenant. Oh, Jesus. Hank! In my office! I've got ten new cases involving androids on my desk every day. We've always had isolated incidents. Old ladies losing their android maids and that kind of crap. But now, we're getting reports of assaults and even homicide, like that guy last night. This isn't just Cyberlife's problem anymore. It's now a criminal investigation, and we've got to deal with it before the shit hits the fan. I want you to investigate these cases and see if there's any link. Why me? Why do I gotta be the one to deal with this shit? I am the least qualified cop in the country to handle this case. I know jack shit about androids, Jeffrey. I can barely change the settings on my own phone. Everybody's overloaded. I think you're perfectly qualified for this type of investigation. Bullshit! The truth is, nobody wants to investigate these fucking androids, and you let me hold in the bag. Cyberlife sent over this android to help with the investigation. It's a state-of-the-art prototype. It'll act as your partner. No fucking way! I don't need a partner, and certainly not this plastic prick! Hank, you are seriously starting to piss me off! You are a police lieutenant! You are supposed to do what I say, and shut your goddamn mouth! You know what my goddamn mouth has to say to you? Okay, huh? okay. I'll pretend like I didn't hear that, so I don't have to add any more pages to your disciplinary folder, because it already looks like a fucking novel! This conversation is over! Jeffrey, Jesus Christ, why are you doing this to me? You know how much I hate these fucking things. Why are you doing this to me? Listen, I've had just about enough of your bitch. Either you do your job or you hand in your badge. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got work to do. Yeah, all right. To have the I was really hoping I it was going to give me a sort of inane option. Yeah. <laughs> Good. That is exactly the, uh, the answer. Have a nice thinking. day, Captain. want to check on him. We're going to give him some uh, time to cool off. I'm going to casually read this magazine instead. Mm. Yeah. I don't know about this little uh, touchpad. Your face.
actually lift. No. Can you lift them? All right. What's up? Uh. Yeah, I'll try. To I get, get the impression my presence causes you some inconvenience, Lieutenant. I'd like you to know I'm very sorry about. In any case, I'd like you to know I'm very happy to be working with you. I'm sure we'll make a great team. Now that we're partners, it would be great to get to know each other better. Is there a he desk doesn't really anywhere like I could use? Just no one's using that one. Kind of punchable face. I don't really blame him. of the future. Uh, okay, dog, you obviously. You have a dog, right? right. I didn't even know I was going to be necessarily speaking to him. I thought that chair. might be like, what am I going to Google? I like I dogs. Like What's your dog's name? What's it to you? Sumo. I call him Sumo. It's a good dog name. Um, let's maybe not bring up anti-androids. Let's talk about music. Do you listen to Knights of the Black Death? I really like that music. It's full of <laughs> so energy. Awkward. You listen to heavy metal? Well, I don't really listen to music as such, but I'd like to. <laughs> yeah, that face is about right. <laughs> You're a Detroit Gears fan, right? Denton this Carter is just getting awkward now. percent of his shots from the three-point line yesterday. Did you see the game? That's what I was watching at the bar last night. Oh. Mm, I could start working, or I could ask him why he hates androids. Uh, hmm. Yeah, okay. Let's do it. A lot of people don't appreciate having androids around. I was wondering, is there any reason in particular you despise me? <laughs> yeah. There is so one. So awkward. <laughs> we gonna talk about it now? All right, let's start. If you have any files on deviancy, <laughs> I'd like to take a look at them. Terminal's on your desk. Knock yourself out. This is actually a nice narrative design moment where um, I would presume that hitting scan all files will actually just download all of these, but I'm kind of liking going through and seeing what uh, different what different moments are. Hmm. And yeah, some of my characters we've met before. Pretty cool. Two hundred and forty-three files. First dates back nine months. It all started in Detroit, and quickly spread across the country. An AX-400 is reported to have assaulted a man last night. That could be a good starting point for our investigation. <laughs> See, like, 
like pretending he's working now. Um, let's be professional. I know you didn't ask for this investigation, Lieutenant, but I'm sure you're a professional. Why don't you go fuck yourself? Oh no, we're telling him he's professional. Great. Yeah, that's kind of what I mean. Big choice text is uh, not helping. I've been assigned this mission, Lieutenant. I didn't come here to wait until you feel like working. Listen, asshole. If it was up to me, I'd throw the lot of you in a dumpster and set a match to it. So stop pissing me off. But things are gonna get nasty. Lieutenant? Uh, sorry to disturb you. I have some information on the AX-400 that attacked the guy last night. <laughs> that one I just said we should start working on. I'm on it. Yeah. Which I think is kind of the whole point, right? Like, he'll listen to a human telling him exactly what an android just told him. Yeah, I gotta love that Hank got a lead. As if, like, we didn't give it to him. Uh, interesting. Oh, super interesting. I wonder if I could have uncovered more if I had been reading these magazines. Which then makes me wonder if I could have been uncovering more if I had been reading the magazines sort of throughout the game as well. Um, yeah, I'm very much for the uh, design paradigm there. Letting the player choose how deeply they want to dive into the narrative. It's cool. Hmm. cutting her hair or my hair? Unclear. to know. Uh, can I use this to cut my hair? Yeah. Or her hair, again. Not sure which. Maybe both. Appreciate that she goes straight for the mirror. It's like, without me even needing to direct her. color hair should we go with chat um i kind of like the idea of white or leaving it as it is but if anybody has opinions let me know if not i'm gonna go with white i think okay cool let's do it that's not white Good thing we found that crowbar earlier. 
once again, thank you level designers for making us feel really smart. So we weren't going to steal those clothes from that guy at the laundromat, but we're apparently going to steal them from the truck. Okay, you look different. That's cool. Now, do we want to go back to her or go to the house? It may not let us get to the house, but we're going to try. Yeah. No dice. Lens flare for extra camera effect. Alice. This is where we scare Alice. a little girl. <laughs> no. No, it wasn't a nightmare. How do you feel? Cool, cool. What are we gonna do now? That android we saw yesterday, he gave me an address. He said we could get help there. The train passes just on the other side of the road. The station can't be far. You feel okay to walk a little? So interesting. I wasn't actually reading that moment when it happened as Let's kind of a, there. like, uh, converge point where different decisions we made would kind of feed back in, but uh, now they are. You're pretty like that. You really look like a human now. On our trail. All right, all right. That's all for now. Ready to go. We've got officers sweeping the neighborhood in case anybody saw anything. Okay, well, let me know if they turn anything up. What are you going to do with that? I have no idea. He's interestingly like the, the first bus like all of our three characters and I think. stayed at the end of the line. Its decision wasn't planned. It was driven by fear. Androids don't feel fear. Deviants do. They get overwhelmed by their emotions and make irrational decisions. All right, well, that still doesn't tell us where it went. It didn't have a plan, and it had nowhere to go. Maybe it didn't go far. I don't know why we're hiding, but it seems like a thing to do since uh, the game's telling me to. <laughs> Were we standing in the road? I'm very confused. Okay, that 
that guy is super threatening. That one is not so threatening. I'm kind of back up. Gosh, so dangerous. Alright, that was actually a really good use of UI. Let's cross the street. It's interesting, like modern day Frogger, basically. No, don't put it down. That's them. Stop. Oh my god, no! Quick, hold it in. <laughs> the controls in this game, no! The I did not want to do that. Wait, now I have to be him. Okay. So, this is interesting, because now I'm playing a character I don't want to play. Um, I am... Pursuing characters I don't want to pursue. And I'm kind of wondering if I just don't like what'll happen. Like, and this is, I mean, I guess this is sort of the, the on the nose thing. They're right? over there! Like, people following their programming are uh, some of the most dangerous needs sometimes. Shoot, we need it alive! Really good music here. Oh, fuck! That's insane! Uh... Do I have to time this? I hope not. Alright, let's try. Let's see what we do. Killed. Do not go after him, Connor. That's an order. Yeah, we're gonna give up. Which is funny because that's not me role playing. That's me like wanting that for the other character. Oh my god, I didn't actually press X. So that was a uh, pretty intense cutscene there. Um, okay, so I think with all the soreness and everything, um, I'm gonna have to cut there a little bit early tonight. Um, but thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue this on Wednesday. I'll be live at four o'clock. Um, yeah, in the meantime, like I usually kind of close up with some comments. Um, I'm definitely still feeling that agency stuff that I was feeling in the last stream. There are a lot of moments here where I'm not feeling like I can make informed decisions because the decisions that they're presenting me with are not really allowing me to to feel like the decision I'm making is informed in any way. Um, 
I think this game really is at its strongest, though, when it's actually kind of taking some freedom away from me a little bit. I'm, I'm weirdly enough enjoying the quick time events more than I'm enjoying the free walk areas, which is kind of strange for a video game. Um, but the free walk areas just feel so stilted. The controls are so hard. Um, the camera angles don't feel natural. Um, and there are moments where the camera angles are really good, but it just is kind of overwhelmed by um, moments where they feel awkward. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I think um, I think we saw both some, some moments of strong and weak level design there. Um, you know, the, the really contained areas where you're kind of stumbling on solutions to things felt really strong. Um, and then the moments that are like, find a thing uh, in like larger open plans, those still feel really awkward. Um, so in a lot of ways, it's like, as this game keeps me more constrained, it feels more natural, I feel more directed, um, and it makes me feel clever for solving puzzles, even if the answer seems a little bit easy. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, I'm kind of interested to see where this is going. It feels like it's kind of just picking up. Um, and uh, it certainly does feel like it's heading in the direction of, you know, um, themes of what happens when people follow orders versus, you know, when they think for themselves. Um, certainly kind of the slavery uprising vibe that I'm hoping, hoping, hoping is not going to go in a really problematic direction, but it feels like it might. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, in general, the writing has been, um, the actual like lines of dialogue have been pretty good, except for that one scene that I sort of pointed out, they felt a little bit weak and stilted. Um, but in general, the lines of dialogue have felt good. I'm just not sure that I'm yet gelling with like the themes and sort of the general, uh, direction of the narrative feels, uh, I will see where it goes. Um, so anyway, thank you for watching, and uh, if there's no questions or comments, then I am going to call it. So hopefully I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Bye.